Hi, and thank you very much for watching. If you've been following this channel for a while, you will know that Albert Pike's plan for World War III, penned in 1871, is currently unfolding before our eyes. Since October 7th, when Hamas launched a quote-unquote surprise attack on Israel, several notable aspects indicated that this conflict was not just another skirmish between Israel and Hamas, but that there was intent behind what happened, and that intent is to divide the world on the matter and to bring about escalation in the intensity of this war, while also drawing more parties into this war. How do we know this to be true? Israel has one of the most advanced militaries in the world and they have had conflicts with Hamas for many years. They have everything in place to know about and quickly respond to threats when they approach the border between Israel and Gaza. In conflicts that have occurred since Gaza was handed over to the Palestinians in 2005, Israel's response has always been swift and has prevented Hamas from achieving its goals. Israel's response to the attack that occurred on October 7th warrants some scrutiny and some questions require answers. Before we continue, I would like to state that I am not choosing sides in this matter. Those who are ultimately responsible for triggering this final conflict want the world to be divided on the matter and this division is used to draw in support for both sides while escalation continues. So what are some of these issues that require scrutiny? First, Less than a month before the attack of October 7th, Hamas posted a video of their preparations for an attack on Israel, showing how they plan to breach the border and enter homes on the other side of the fence. Second, four days before the attack, on October 3rd, Hamas test-fired rockets into the sea, and for some reason, we are to believe that Israel did not see this as a threat and potential preparation for a possible attack that may have required more intense monitoring of Hamas's movement within Gaza. Third, according to several Israeli soldiers who were no longer on active duty when the October 7th attack occurred, there is no way in which even a pigeon could approach the border between Gaza and Israel without Israel's military knowing about it. A year ago, there was a military operation in Gaza to prepare for such events, and ongoingly there are trainings for these kind of scenarios. This raises serious questions for me anyway about Israeli intelligence, what happened? Two years ago, there, were, um, there was a successful deployment of underground barriers with sensors to alert exactly on these kind of terrorist breaches. Israel has one of the most advanced and high-tech armies. How come there was zero response to the border and fence breaching? I cannot understand that. Personally, I served in the IDF 25 years ago in the intelligence forces. There's no way, in my view, that Israel did not know of what's coming. A cat moving alongside the fence is triggering all forces. So this? What happened to the strongest army in the world? How come border crossings were wide open? Something is very wrong here. Something is very strange. This chain of events is very unusual and not typical for the Israeli defense system. I have also worked with similar technology in my profession, so I can vouch for what they are saying. Fourth, when Hamas breached the border with a bulldozer on the morning of October 7th, Israel's army was nowhere to be seen and, in addition, Israel waited for an additional seven hours before beginning to respond to the invasion. These are only some of the anomalies that we have to consider having to do with the start of this conflict. And when we do, we realize that there are agents on both sides of this conflict whose actions align with Albert Pike's plan for three world wars that was penned in 1871. For those who have not seen this plan yet, consider what it says. The third world war must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agentur of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, or the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel and its supporters, mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. 
Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Historically, when a conflict between Israel and Hamas broke out, the world at large would usually condemn Israel for its actions in defending itself with its technology and overpowering force. Now that Israel seems to have allowed Hamas to breach their borders and to commit atrocities unhindered for at least seven hours, several countries have aligned themselves with Israel, which is something very different to what we have witnessed in the past. But it certainly brings about the division on the matter that Pike's plan refers to. When Israel began its response to the attack, instead of focusing on first taking out the missile batteries within Gaza, they bombed buildings in the upper-class neighborhoods, leaving Hamas with the capability to continue its attacks on Israel. Now in light of Pike's plan, if Israel removed Hamas's ability to attack, the war would come to a quick end, but allowing Hamas to continue its attacks, while both sides suffer civilian casualties, this conflict can be escalated to involve third parties. With Hamas having taken hundreds of hostages, Israel is given a righteous reason for cutting water and electricity supplies and fuel deliveries to Gaza, and closing all border crossings as a means to get Hamas to release the hostages. The flip side of this is of course a humanitarian crisis that will ensue affecting all who live in Gaza, and the hidden intent, as explained by Pike, is to rally the Muslim world behind Hamas through the population of Gaza, while the intensity of the conflict continues to escalate through specific actions that will align those who view this behind one of the two sides. So what can we expect to see in the coming days? Once again, what I share with you is my opinion as a watchman, and I could be wrong, but I believe the margin for error has now become very small, and the time for God's judgment of the world is just about to begin. In previous videos, we looked at the 1290 day period mentioned in Daniel 12 verse 11, which expired immediately before the solar eclipse that occurred on October 14th. And from what I understand, we are now in a transition period between God's judgment that began with His church and the commencement of His judgment over the world and the unbelievers. This time that the world is about to enter is described in the Bible as the Day of the Lord. The Bible provides us with some interesting clues when it describes the day of the Lord, and the first thing that we take note of is that it follows a blood moon. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. We have seen how the model provided to us in the book of Daniel pointed to the events that occurred over the past three years. With normalcy being removed from our daily lives, with the truth being cast to the ground and lies that permeated the world since March of 2020, and an abomination that was set up causing the temples of God to become empty. We have also seen why this mystery would only be revealed to those who lived during the time of the end, and why those who lived before us would not have understood Gabriel's explanation to Daniel. Jesus referred to this period in Matthew 24 as the beginning of sorrows or the time of testing of God's church. The world is now about to enter the next phase of God's judgment, which is known as the tribulation, or the day of the Lord. And given that we have seen the expiry of the 1290 days, on the day before the solar eclipse occurred on October 14th, just as prophesied by Jesus in Matthew, it stands to reason that the day of the Lord will start shortly after the blood moon that will occur on October 28th. God's Word shares more specifics about the day of the Lord in Zephaniah, and it is very important, in my opinion, to note what is said as it refers to some who will be hidden in this day, and points out events that we are now seeing unfolding before our eyes. It also describes specific actions of people that occur on a very specific date that Zephaniah associates with the day of the Lord. First, please consider what is shared in Zephaniah chapter 2. 
Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nations not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day passes the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. In this passage, a meek or humble nation that was not desired by the world is addressed and told to seek the Lord, to seek righteousness, and to humble themselves before the Lord so that they can be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. It is very important to understand what is meant by this instruction as it will determine your position in the time that is right before us. This passage aligns with what we read in Isaiah 26, where this undesired nation is referred to as God's people who are instructed to hide in their chambers until God's wrath is over. Thy dead men shall live, together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For the dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood, and shall no more cover her slain. For those who say that the Bible provides no evidence for the rapture of God's people before the tribulation, or before God's anger is poured out over the world, these passages provide clear evidence of this event and both are from the Old Testament. Another is found in Jeremiah 6, where we read the following in connection with the wicked and their lot. They are all grievous revolters walking with slanders. They are brass and iron. They are all corruptors. The bellows are burned. The lead is consumed of the fire. The founder melteth in vain, for the wicked are not plucked away. Paul provides further detail and insight into what is described regarding the undesired nation, and this is shared in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Coming back to Zephaniah, note how the final verse in this passage describes the destruction of Gaza and the neighboring cities in Israel, exactly where the war is currently raging. For those who doubt the authenticity of the Bible, it is the only book in which accurate information about future events is found that play out exactly as described. No other book in history has been able to describe events ahead of time so accurately as the Bible does. It goes to show that the Bible is a supernatural book that was designed and written by someone who exists outside of time and space and who knew the end from the beginning. What is further interesting are the activities associated with the day of the Lord that are described in Zephaniah chapter 1. We can associate these activities with a very specific date that most who live in the world today would be familiar with. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice, that I will punish the princes, and the king's children, and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. In the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their masters' houses with violence and deceit. In verse 7, Zephaniah describes how the Lord has prepared a sacrifice and has bid his guests. Where else do we read about this? In Matthew 22, Jesus shares the parable of the wedding feast in which an undesired nation is once again described as being chosen. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, 
and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Both of these passages focus on the apparel that is worn by those who are being discussed. In Matthew 22, wedding garments are required for attending the wedding. And in Zephaniah 1, those who are wearing strange apparel are promised punishment. In Amos 8, where much of what has happened over the past few weeks is described, we find another attribute associated with the day of the Lord being described. And I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only son, and the end thereof is a bitter day. This verse would suggest that while those who are seeking the Lord and who are preparing to attend the heavenly wedding are getting ready for the event, those who have refused the invitation are attending a different feast, which is called their feast. And in Zephaniah chapter 1, if we combine what we understand from the other passages with what is said here, we are told that people who will be attending their feast will be wearing strange apparel. It just so happens that a few days following the blood moon that will occur on October 28th, many people in this world will partake in festivities where they will be wearing strange apparel and where the children will leap on the threshold of homes that they visit for tricks or treats, and where houses will be filled or decorated with evil and deceit. That feast, of course, is Halloween, and the founder of the Satanic Church had this to say about Christian parents who allow their children to participate in this evil. I am glad that Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night out of the year. Welcome to Halloween. Now, what is interesting is that during 2020, there were literally hundreds of people who received Halloween rapture dreams that they shared on YouTube. I've made several videos in which some of these dreams were shared. I have searched to see if there were any for 2023, but there are almost none, and I believe this was once again a three-year warning that was given to God's people at the start of the period known as the beginning of sorrows, providing a three-year warning about the time that is now right before us. In Acts 20, we see how another three-year warning was given, providing us with a pattern for what we see in this case. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Even in the show The Leftovers, which concerns the sudden disappearance of 2% of the population, one of the characters quotes this passage from Acts 20, and then mentions that when this disappearance occurred, the time of grace was also over. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn them night and day with tears. Three years. Three years. That's 
tomorrow. The grace period's over, Tom. In Dana Coverstone's calendar dream, which he shared in 2020, the person showing him the calendar pointed to specific months on the calendar and then tapped them three times. Back in December, I woke up, I had a dream, and in that dream, I saw a calendar starting January 2020, and it was being flipped, and I saw January, I saw February, I saw March, and when March came up, the hand held it, and I saw the fin a finger underline the month of March and then tap it three times. So underline the month of March, tapped it three times. So to me, it was emphasis. Something's going to happen in March. At the time when Pastor Coverstone received this dream, he saw the three taps as emphasis. But I believe the three taps may also have indicated the three years until the application of what he saw would apply. Please listen to what he saw regarding the end of October and the beginning of November. And then I saw October come up and then I saw November, and this is when it got real to me in the dream. I think the intensity, uh, according to my Fitbit, when I woke up, my heart rate was about 180. So that was Monday night. It was also a night that I woke up not feeling very well at all. I was up during the night, not feeling well. But anyway, the minute the finger underlined November three times, instead of tapping it, I saw a fist ball up, and it hit the calendar. And literally, the calendar exploded into the wall. The numbers seemed like they were 3D and they were falling, they were just flying everywhere. And there was a cloud of chaos that started. And then the next thing I saw was I saw, I saw armed protesters. I saw fighting in the streets. I saw people pummeling one another. I saw businesses shuttered and shut up. I saw, I saw schools closed. I saw schoolrooms with cobwebs hanging in them and like things like papers falling off the wall and posters falling like no one had been in them for months. I saw banks, bank buildings with the roofs being taken off. And it looked almost like alien abduction because money was just flying through the roof into some type of like a vacuum cleaner. I know it sounds kind of strange, but I was watching wealth just being taken. I saw politicians in back rooms, uh, making deals with people, pat, you know, patting people on the back and, and laughing and smiling and smirking. And I saw monuments. I saw, I saw Washington, D.C. burning. I saw Washington, D.C. blazing. I saw fires everywhere. I saw people being rounded up. I saw Chinese and Russian soldiers on the ground. And Russian soldiers were telling the Chinese soldiers to go and pick up these people, round up these people, secure this quadrant, secure this area. I saw blue helmets of the UN. I saw military things taking place. I also saw no sign of President Trump. I saw no sign of leadership in Washington, D.C. But the vultures that I had seen were now like gargoyles, and they were 10 feet off the ground, 10 to 15 feet off the ground. And they were just attacking people mercilessly. I saw people hiding in their homes and garages. I saw churches being burned. I saw homes being burned. I saw absolute chaos. And the fist punch on the November of 2020 is what got my attention. And then I heard the words again, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. In another prophecy by Ken Peters, who was given a dream about the tribulation, this three-year period is also pointed out. Many have claimed that this powerful prophecy has proven to be false and that Ken Peters is therefore a false prophet, since what he mentioned did not come to pass since the time it was given. But in my view, it is similar to the 1290-day prophecy that Gabriel gave to Daniel. It is a prophecy that has a future application, and until the starting point could be identified, the prophecy would remain a mystery and unfulfilled. Having hindsight from our position in time in 2023, we know that the upheaval of all nations is literally about to occur in the next few days. The Lord says, in three years, you will see the upheaval of all nations. I'm either the biggest false prophet that ever lived, or I'm the stupidest prophet to ever say that. The upheaval of all nations, all nations, in three years. 
If you've studied end-time Bible prophecies, you know exactly what that's pointing to. It has to be the return of Christ. In three years, you will see the upheaval of all nations, and you will see that even national names will be gone forever. Ken Peters also had something very interesting to share about the same time frame that we have looked at in this video. And he calls this the day of separation and a day of a holy convocation, which would certainly be a description given to the heavenly wedding that is about to occur. This is a holy day, a holy day among you, that you will never forget as time progresses. As time begins to come faster and faster, you will look back on this day, the first day of this month, November, you will look back even as the clocks were changed and time began anew and you will say that was the day of a holy convocation. The day the Lord set me aside and chose me for a special work. Rend your heart, says the spirit of grace and supplication. If you're interested, the entire dream that was shared by Dana Coverstone and the full prophecy that was shared by Ken Peters can both be viewed at the end of this video. You can also use the markers in the description below to jump to any of these if you'd like to study them in more detail. Moving over to predictive programming. In the previous video we looked at the classroom scene from the iPetco 2 animation and I pointed out how the solar eclipse that Lily is positioned in is connected to the division of Jerusalem which is referred to as Zion in God's word. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. If you would like to see more information on how this animation applies to events transpiring in the world right now, please watch the three most recent videos in which this is discussed in a little more detail. The apple is dropped at the time of the solar eclipse and rolls 9 to 10 times until it is stopped by Obama's shoe. The apple then splits. Since the war between Israel and Hamas started on October 7th, there has been a notable delay in Israel's plans for a ground invasion of Gaza. I believe this delay is represented by the apple that rolls over the floor several times before it splits. I have a feeling that the ground invasion, when it commences, will lead to a steep escalation in the war that will draw in third parties. There is also an indication that when the apple splits, it brings about the end of money as we know it. The same sentiment is shared in this scene where the message in the eyes of this brainless character shows markets plunging combined with war coverage as events that are associated with the destruction of a mosque, matching almost exactly what occurred in Gaza over the past few days. You will note that there are 10 black birds and smoke that rise from this attack. This imagery has been shown to us before on the cover of the Economist magazine for the world in 2017, where a tower is struck by lightning and 10 flames ascend from it. We also see references to information presented in Pike's plan shown in this image. Pike speaks about a moment where both atheism and Christianity would be conquered at the same time, and that would seem to be what is depicted in this image. Communism represents atheism, and the cross represents Christianity, and this information is not provided in the iPetco 2 animation. Now of course the enemy will not conquer Christianity, but when the restrainer is removed, as described in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the enemy would certainly use this opportunity to claim this as a victory for his side, instead of acknowledging that the restraining force that prevented him from acting up to that point has been removed. This will of course be part of the continued deception that awaits the world and will very likely include the appearance of non-human entities or aliens on the scene. The image on the cover of The Economist magazine associates a very specific date with the moment that is described in Pike's letter and that would be the date on which Martin Luther pinned his 95 Theses to the doors of the Roman Catholic Church. That date of course is October 31st or Halloween. Jesus also stated that in the time of the end it would be as in the days of Noah, and in Noah's days the flood came over the earth on the seventeenth day of the second month. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, 
and the windows of heaven were opened. I am not committed to the use of any calendar that is in use today, as we simply cannot say with absolute certainty which calendar is right and which is wrong. And I am convinced that this is the reason why a specific day count was provided in Daniel for those who would receive understanding of the 1290 days. It requires no calendar to figure it out. I do, however, find it interesting that the calendar that Israel uses today shows what used to be the 17th day of the second month during Noah's time to align with October 31st to November 1st this year, which further confirms the word of God in this matter. Also, the Torah portion that will be read during this week is Vayera, which translates to, And He Appeared. Knowing that the 1290 day period that was prophesied in Daniel has now ended, and that the day of the Lord will soon start, during which the world and those who have refused to accept the wedding invitation of the Father will be judged, where are you positioned for the events that will soon play out in the world? Have you accepted our Heavenly Father's invitation to His Son's wedding? Or are you planning to go about your business in this world and possibly even be part of the enemy's festivities in the coming days during Halloween? If you want to ensure that you are dressed in a clean wedding garment that is without spot or wrinkle, and that will be acceptable to our Heavenly Father for attending the wedding when it begins, please watch this video as it is essential to obey God's instruction given to us in Zephaniah chapter 2. I will soon upload another video in which rapture dreams associated with Halloween will be shared, and given what we know now, I believe their application is for the window of time right before us. Make sure that you are ready and that you do not, through ignorance, align yourself with the enemy when God expects you to specifically seek him out, and to seek righteousness out, and to humble yourself before him. Until next time, or until we meet in the air, God bless. Hey, this is Dana Coverstone. I'm a pastor. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a patriot. I love this country. And uh, I can confirm the first part of what I'm about to tell you because I told some men at a prayer group uh, back in December, second or third week of December. But I want to share three specific dreams that I've had recently, uh, going back to December. Two that I've had this week, both, both Monday and last night, Monday and Tuesday night. Because I believe, number one, they are prophetic. Uh, the first one that I had has come explicitly true based on the events of March through June, <clears throat> the month in which we're living. And uh, I do not claim to be a prophet by any means. I understand, though, that some dreams and visions by their nature have a prophetic tendency to them. But I do believe I've seen things, uh, both that have happened as relevant by the first dream that I had and some things that I've seen recently. So you can take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. You can pray about it. You can think about it. Uh, but I believe that I have a warning uh, for the country, a warning for rural America, a, rural, uh, a, a, a warning for America overall. But here's what happened. Back in December, I woke up. I had a dream. And in that dream, I saw a calendar starting January 2020. And it was being flipped. And I saw January. I saw February. I saw March. And when March came up, the hand held it, and I saw the fin a finger underline the month of March, and then tap it three times. So underline the month of March, tapped it three times. So to me, it was emphasis. Something's going to happen in March. And then I saw April, May, June. And when June came, the hand underlined June again and tapped it three times. Then, in the vision... I saw people marching. I saw protests. I saw people wearing masks. I saw lines going into hospitals. I saw um, typical medical doctors with needles or, 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 or syringes. I saw people on ventilators. I saw people who were very, very sick, very, very ill. I saw newspaper headlines trumpeting thousands of people getting sick. I saw um, ambulances just flying down roads. I, and then I saw, I saw cities on fire. I saw buildings being burned. I saw protesters with masks. Uh, I saw people who were, had their fists in the air, people who were yelling and screaming, angry as at, just at the world. <clears throat> I saw 
courthouses. I saw state houses surrounded. I saw people who were mad at the world. Uh, I saw I saw guns, shotguns specifically put in the air, held like this, and I saw barriers within cities. Um, and I told several men in my church about this, and I can confirm who those men were, and they'll confirm that what I'm telling you is what I told them. I saw absolute chaos. And the other thing I saw was vultures flying over large cities. And not just the ones that were burning, but I saw vultures flying over the cities, and I saw smoke rising, and I saw I saw people fearful. I saw people terrified. I saw people inside their homes, and looking out the windows, the curtains of their windows, and with guns in their hands because there was absolute fear. Then I heard the words, "Brace yourself, brace yourself." So since December, I've been hearing those words, "Brace yourself, brace yourself." Um, January, February came, didn't seem too much. I reminded the men of the dream. And then in March, boom, COVID-19 hit. And things started shutting down. Churches were shut down. Business was shut down. The economy shut down. Uh, then we began to see the protests starting in, Mar in May in Minneapolis. And all those things began to go on. So where we are at the end of the primary election here in Kentucky. And now there's talk of more shutdowns. I just heard the governor uh, talk about schools opening back up and things of that nature. <coughs> But the things that I saw in a dream and vision back in December are the same things that I watched in the news almost every day since March through June. All this time I kept hearing, brace yourself, brace yourself. Um, I spend time in prayer. I spend time in the Word. I'm a pastor. And it's not just my job. It's something that I enjoy doing, I love doing. And I'm very interested in the news around the world. I read 40 newspapers a day from all around the world. I, I keep up with news uh, in other parts of the, of, the, of, the, of the nations, better sometimes than I hear here because it's hard to know who to trust. But I get news from all over the world, all around the world, from both liberal and conservative sources. Um, I'm very well read. I'm very understanding of how nations work. Uh, I've traveled quite a bit, and I'm not just making these things up. I can confirm what I have said. And with that in mind, on Monday night, I had another dream. And it woke me from my bed. I made notes about it. I shot some video of myself, just making sure I can remember. But here's what I saw. I saw a calendar. It started with a calendar. And as I was having this, the calendar was up, a white figure appeared. And it, it, to me, it was, it was a rep representing God, the Holy Spirit, something pure, something righteous, something true, something holy, because there was nothing... Um, Nothing sinister about it, nothing evil. But I heard the voice say, part two, part two. And I saw June go up. I saw July, I saw August, and then I saw September. And I saw the finger underneath the word September, and I, like emphasizing it, and tapped it three times. And then I saw October come up, and then I saw November. And this is when it got real to me in the dream. I think the intensity, uh, according to my Fitbit, when I woke up, my heart rate was about 180. So that was Monday night. It was also a night that I woke up not feeling very well at all. I was up during the night, not feeling well. But anyway, the minute the finger underlined November three times, instead of tapping it, I saw a fist ball up and it hit the calendar. And literally, the calendar exploded into the wall. The numbers seemed like they were 3D and they were falling, they were just flying everywhere. And there was a cloud of chaos that started. And then the next thing I saw was I saw, I saw armed protesters. I saw fighting in the streets. I saw people pummeling one another. I saw businesses shuttered and shut up. I saw, I saw schools closed. I saw schoolrooms with cobwebs hanging in them and like things like papers falling off the wall and posters falling like no one had been in them for months. I saw banks bank buildings with the roofs being taken off. And it looked almost like alien abduction because money was just flying through the roof into some type of like a vacuum cleaner. I know it sounds kind of strange, but I was watching wealth just being taken. I saw politicians in back rooms uh, making deals with people, pat, you know, patting people on the back and, and laughing and smiling and smirking. And I saw monuments. I saw, I saw Washington, D.C. burning. I saw Washington, D.C. blazing. I saw fires everywhere. I saw people being rounded up. I saw Chinese and Russian soldiers 
on the ground. And Russian soldiers were telling the Chinese soldiers to go and pick up these people, round up these people, secure this quadrant, secure this area. I saw blue helmets of the UN. I saw military things taking place. I also saw no sign of President Trump. I saw no sign of leadership in Washington, D.C. But the vultures that I had seen were now like gargoyles, and they were 10 feet off the ground, 10 to 15 feet off the ground. And they were just attacking people mercilessly. I saw people hiding in their homes and garages. I saw churches being burned. I saw homes being burned. I saw absolute chaos. And the fist punch on the November of 2020 is what got my attention. And then I heard the words again, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. That has been something that I have heard for almost almost seven, well, seven months now. Starting once we get to July, it's going to be seven months. Um, and once again, I'm not claiming to be a prophet. I'm not claiming, proclaiming, you know, just, we'll see what happens in November, through November, and see if I'm right about this. But I know when I hear God's voice. I know, I know how, what God's voice sounds like to me. I know when he speaks. And I know when I have a dream that I know is him. And the things that I was seeing, I don't say this to scare people, but I say this to warn people that there are some pretty sinister things coming down the pike. And not just for the lost, but for God's people as well. Uh, the second dream I had last night, and it woke me up. Uh, in this dream, uh, we just had a yard sale to help fund a, a team going to, to Ecuador this next year. And we had a yard sale. And I had asked our secretary to get us some change for that, secretary, for that, for that yard sale. So in the dream that I'm having, I walk to the bank, I walk into the bank to get some change. And on the door it says there's no change available. I saw the sign, it registered in my mind, but I walked on in and the president of the local bank was at the teller station and she, had, she was going to be taking care of business. And I said, I need to get $10 and quarters for a yard sale. And she said, I'm sorry, but the U.S. Mint is no longer making currency or making change like pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, half dollars. We're not doing that anymore. And I was like, well, what do you mean? She said, they've stopped doing it. And I said, well, how are we going to be able to charge $1.50 for anything? And she said, prepare for hyperinflation and just charge $2. And then she said to me in the dream, oh, and by the way, $1 and $5 bills will follow soon after that. And then I heard those words, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. And I woke up, I wrote these things down. Um, I've never gone on video and recorded the dreams that I've had. And I, I hesitated to not do the one I had back in December. But everything I saw in that dream in December came true between March and June. When in, the, in, in the dream I was showed March through June. And so I don't think I would be doing uh, anyone a service if I don't share what I saw in these dreams and visions. And I believe that we're going to see not just a second huge wave of COVID between September, October, November, but we're going to see major things with the elections. We're going to see major chaos in our country. We're going to see troops in our cities. We're going to see the protests get even worse. We're going to see buildings burn. We're going to see what could only lead to civil war in this country. And so for my friends that are believers, I've, here, I'm just going to share you what, what I think you need to hear. First of all, you need to be preparing food. You need to make sure you've got alternative forms of currency like silver or gold or whatever. I believe you need to have an ample supply of both guns and ammunition. And that's not just the Second Amendment fan in me coming out. That is the things that we're seeing. Uh, they're talking about defunding the police. That means one thing. You're on your own in a lot of areas. Uh, I also believe you need to be praying like you never prayed before. Make sure your family knows what's going on, where you are. Have some, some communication between your family about if certain things happen, if certain things go down. I'm not saying get off the grid. And I've never, ever said anything like this in my church. Um, I have said I, I believe things like this could happen, but I've never done what I'm doing right now. And I'm telling you that between September and November of this coming year. And you'll be able to check me, you know, if, if, if by the time we get November, nothing's happened, or December 1st, man, you call, you call me on this and say, Dana Coverstone, you are an absolute idiot and a fool for saying those things. Go right ahead. 
that I realize I'm responsible for what I've spoken. But I also know what I sense, and I know the Holy Spirit's voice enough to know that what I've heard, I believe is going to happen. And what I heard in December happened between March and June. Not because I'm a prophet, but because dreams have a prophetic edge to them sometimes. I've been doing a whole series on dreams and visions. I'm going to finish that series up tonight on my, uh, at our church. And I'm going to talk about why dreams and visions are literally an extension of the spiritual gifts of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Because word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment, all those things are required for dreams. And I have prayed, Lord, show me what these things mean that I have seen. Show me how to interpret them and what they are. Uh, and right now as I speak this, it is, it is June 24th, Wednesday night at 5.30 p.m. in Burksville, Kentucky. I'm in my office at the church, Living Word Ministries in Birchville, Kentucky, sharing this. Not to scare you, because I believe, you know, look, God gave the prophets of the Old Testament a lot of warnings. Not to scare people, but to prepare them for what was coming. And so I'm, I'm, I'm challenging you. Don't just throw my word away. Don't just think I'm some, some preacher trying to get people to come. That's not it either. Because look, the Bible says the last days will be a great falling away. Jesus tells people to endure to the end. Make sure you endure to the end. Why? Because people won't endure sound doctrine. They're gonna they're gonna hear something. You know, some are gonna hear me and go, "Oh man, he is on drugs or something." I'm just telling you the dreams I've had. You can do with them. You can interpret them the way that you want to. But I'm going to declare that I believe we're gonna see between September and November incredible, terrible, awful, nasty, bad things happen in this nation. And for the people who are not prepared for it, it's not just gonna catch them catch them in a bad place. It's going to destroy a lot of faith, a lot of hearts, a lot of relationships, a lot of people. It's going to, it, the aim is to kill this nation. Because right now, we are a nation that stands in the way of a lot of the Antichrist principles like freedom, liberty, justice. First Amendment, Second Amendment, the Antichrist doesn't want those things. And yes, I do believe the Antichrist is alive and well on planet Earth. And I don't, like, I don't, I don't really care what people think about this video. You can call me whatever you want. You can say whatever you want about me. But wait till December 1st to say it. And if I'm wrong, I'll be the first one to come out and say, Folks, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I ate that night. But I've never had two dreams like this. I've never had a part one, part two. Part one came fully true. And part two, I believe, will as well. So, heed my words, folks. Believers... Stop messing around if you're not living for the Lord like you need to. Because the press, there, there's an olive press moment coming for the church in this country. An olive press moment. And we're going to get crushed and squeezed and pushed down. That's why I believe God keeps saying, brace yourself. He's saying this to me so I can say it to you. Brace yourself for the things that are coming. Endure till the end no matter how hard it gets. I'm not giving up the faith that I have in Christ. I've come too far in this walk and too far in my life to do that. But I want to make sure that others don't make that mistake and don't just walk away from it. Take up the cross, deny yourself, and follow him. Thanks for listening. You have heard my word many times. You have heard my scriptures speak to your hearts. And yet you have heard this one over and over. But I say to you today, it shall be alive in your hearing. For I, the Lord, will send you help from the sanctuary. Yes, I say I will send you help from the sanctuary, from the holy place of my habitation. I have sent out international angels, heavenly hosts that will begin to make you strong again. For my people and my church... Those of a remnant have been in a severe testing and trial. For I have been preparing them for eternal things to come. And many would say, Lord, why, why, why? But I am saying that I am preparing you for an eternal weight of glory. That blows me away. So that when you put on the robe of righteousness and stand before my Son, that you will know that truly you have done well, that you will not think you got in by the skin of your teeth, but you will know that you served the king well. You know that you overcame, 
For did not my son say seven times in the great revelation to John that those who overcome, 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 shall they not rule and reign with me? Is this not your destiny? Is this not what each and every one of you are called to be and to do? So I'm telling you today that help from the sanctuary is being sent to you right now. That the journey will get easier. And that the battle, though it may rage upon this earth, that you will be strong and glorious. That you will be filled with might. That you will be filled with great faith. For truly my spirit has chosen each and every one of you to be overcomers. But this is not automatic. This is not something that just happens. This is something that is the outpouring of your continual fight. And did not Paul say to you, fight the good fight of faith? I am strengthening your arms today. I am strengthening your feeble knees. For some of you today, those sins that have easily beset you are being removed. They're being pushed away. For I, the Lord God, have chosen you as a special people. This is Jubilee. I have chosen you as a treasured people. But more than that, I have chosen you to be a feared people. And the fear of my name will fall upon my church again. And this earth and its inhabitants will know that I have rose up mightily among my own. O gathering, O jubilee, says the Lord, be strong in this hour. Do not shrink back from the trials, but face off with the adversary, knowing that I, the Lord, are raising your arms like Moses when Ur and Aaron lifted up his arms. Today, my angelic hosts are lifting up your arms. They're beginning to do things that you cannot do on your own. They're beginning to bring reconciliation and restoration. You will see a sweeping across America in the next three years. You will see staggering, staggering issues challenging lives. You will see great devastation upon your land and many foreign lands. For the wrath of God is beginning in the earth against the unjust, against those who refuse my good news. But my people, you are in a safe place. You are in a very, very safe place with me. You must not fear the upheaval of nations. You must not fear the moving of nations into the Middle East. You must not fear what is going to happen upon Israel. You must not fear what will happen to America. For in the midst of chaos, I, the Lord, rule. I rule in the midst of downturns. I rule in the midst of trials. For my people are special, and you must understand that I chose you above others. That when you responded to my son's atonement, that I made a special compact with you, a covenant that cannot be broken. This is not your hour of defeat, but this is your hour to rise up and be strong. Like a great shipmast in the midst of a terrible storm, shall you be unwavered and unmoving. And I will pilot each and every one of you as you surrender to the working of my spirit. As you decree today, do you not believe that I have all these things for you? But you must be an obedient people to me. You must not give place to lip service. The things that I say in my word you must do in this hour. Never forget my throne of grace. Even in your rebellion, my throne of grace will give you mercy and empower you to become those of a glorious nature. The Lord says, stop being distracted. I want distractions put away from each of you. For some of you, it's the amount of time you spend in things that are not eternal. Look at your lives, children, today. My Father is preparing great crowns of rewards. And very, very soon, I will be your soon-coming king. But for some of my people, the day will catch them unaware, and they will not be prepared. And they will be like a man who went on a journey without food, without clothing, and came into a storm and suffered great loss. You must hear me, my children, for my spirit beckons each of you now. This is not a time any longer to give me 50%. You must give me 100. 
for you are called to be overcomers. You have been destined by my Father to sit with me, excuse me, to sit with the 24 elders and make great decisions and heavenly strategies in the new earth and heaven to come. Do you not see that you are called to things beyond this limitation on earth? Come on, my people. You must see into a new dimension. You must look beyond your trials and your problems. And the Lord says you must no longer be complainers like Israel. For the Lord says this world will devour the complainers. But those who are clothed with the fire of my spirit, they cannot be consumed. They cannot be moved and shaken. Soon you will begin to understand the very power of your worship and how it shatters spiritual realms and breaks principalities' backs. For great darkness has been sent upon your land. For those in high civil authorities have given this nation over to the ways of darkness. But I, the Lord, will redeem my people. I did not come to redeem governments. I did not come to exalt nations. I came to covenant with the people that are called out. So be ye the called out ones, says the Lord. And make a fresh covenant with me today. Rend your hearts before me, all of you, regardless of how well you know me, or how long you've walked with me, or how deep you've gone with me, or how you've served me. This is a holy day, a holy day among you, that you will never forget as time progresses. As time begins to come faster and faster, you will look back on this day, the first day of this month, November. You will look back, even as the clocks were changed, and time began anew, and you will say, that was the day of a holy convocation, the day the Lord set me aside and chose me for a special work. Rend your heart, says the Spirit of grace and supplication. The Lord says you have called times of prayer here. They must be adhered to by more and more. Some of you are ignoring the Spirit of grace and you find excuses and alibis with which to avoid spiritual depth. But a great tide is coming, like a tidal wave that pulls people out to the seas some of my people will begin to be pulled out to the sea and never return to the depth of their first love. Do not ignore the beckoning of my spirit this day. This land is being weighed in the balances. There must be great prayer. Prophets have come to you and spoken that your prayers will dictate the next three years. It is time you become a serious people. For Satan has desired to send scorpions and demonic beings to bite the people of God, to get them to doubt my goodness through a lack of separation. This is a day of separation, says the Lord. I called you to be a sanctified people. Come out. Come out from this world and be separate. Set aside these things that trip you up and do the things that make your Lord a Lord of pleasure for you. A master who smiles when he looks upon you when you work. No, your work shall never ever obtain your salvation. But your earthly works will determine the pleasure of the king. And where you are in the midst of his presence. For some of you the spirit of grace is saying, kneel. Others he is saying to your hearts, lift your hands high and pledge your allegiance to the Lamb of God. Pledge your allegiance to the kingdom that comes. The Lord says, in three years, you will see the upheaval of all nations. I'm either the biggest false prophet that ever lived, or I'm the stupidest prophet to ever say that. The upheaval of all nations, all nations, in three years. If you've studied end-time Bible prophecies, you know exactly what that's pointing to. It has to be the return of Christ. In three years, you will see the upheaval of all nations, and you will see that even national names will be gone forever. They're about to wipe the name Syria off the face of the earth. Do you know that Assyria is one of the original nations of the world? It's about to disappear. Iraq is about to disappear, the land of Shinar. Some of you act as though these things can never happen in this modern era. But if you look back many times throughout the history of man, nations have lost their names, their influence. 
And these things are happening now, says the Lord. And you must be ready. And you must remember what Paul said to you, that having done all to stand, you must stand with your loins girded with truth. Do not let deception come. Do not buy into lies. Remember what my son said before he departed this earth to sit at the right hand of my glory. He said, beware and let no man deceive you. Guard your hearts, my children. Do well and cause your father to release a great smile of his pleasure upon you. Go before him this day without leaders, without worshipers, and tell him, these are my areas, these are my things, these are my fears, these are my failures. And he will raise you up. For in your humility you shall be exalted. For in the, for in the end of times you will see the pride of man like never before. You will see the obstinance of men's heart Hearts, excuse me, contending for that which is bound for Gehenna. But for my people, as Isaiah prophesied, arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord will rise upon you.